Hello, welcome to module two, setting up and navigating architect. We'll go ahead and get into this right now. Uh, agenda, really just accessing architect, uh, architect interface overview. We'll have some screenshots, um, obviously in the hands-on. Uh, I will walk through that. Um, it'll also give you guys time to kind of get a hands-on view um, from your perspective. Uh, key components of the architect interface uh, and navigating architect. So accessing architect, um, the easiest way to do that, obviously, uh, if you or your business have a login to Genesis Cloud, um, you're simply, you're, this is the login page. You can kind of see when you go and click admin, things will pop up. You can either search in that search bar above here, uh, which is located right here, or you can just go down to architect, select architect, that will pop up an additional screen. Um, if you're in the web-based uh, browser of the, or the browser-based version of this, in the application, it will pop a web page for you. Um, this is the layout uh, architect interface. It's pretty user friendly visual design tool within Genesis Cloud Platform, specific, specifically designed for creating and managing call flows in a contact center environment. You can see here that when you go to architect or when it pops up for you, uh, all your call flows are going to be there. Uh, under the flows icon, you'll see there's a drop down that will be like outbound calls, in queue, bot, um, anything like that, common modules. Uh, the prompts tab, same kind of thing. There's user and system prompts, and then a dependency search. So if, let's say you're making sure that um, all the prompts, uh, that a prompt has been updated, and you need to check which flows you need to re-update or republish those flows to. Um, that's a good a good area or good tab for that. Uh, some, some good components of the architect interface, just to get familiar with, obviously the toolbar, uh, toolbox, workspace, property panels, and call flow outline. Uh, the tool part, the toolbar, and we'll cover this hands-on pretty in-depth, the toolbar is where you're going to save it, where the version is, where you're going to validate, where, you, where you'll publish it. You're able to print it off if you need to. Uh, the toolbox, that is where, right here, this is where all of the um, components are going to be. So, you know, like the common modules or, you know, setting or getting data, um, transferring to menus or queues, um, any kind of flow outcomes, anything like that. That's where the data action, that's where you'll pull and drag um, from that toolbox. Your workspace obviously is the center point that that's where you're going to focus is going to be. Uh, that's where you'll click and drag or you'll apply different components, uh, you know, playing audio to doing a, a, a menu check or a menu uh, delivered to menu to transfer to sales, for example. We'll get into this um, in later modules as well, especially hands on hands on uh, exercises. Uh, so just uh, yeah, get make sure you're comfortable with this as you're walking through that. Uh, the workspace, obviously, that's what we're just talking about. Properties panels on the right-hand side, that only pops up when you select a component. So like this play audio component here, the properties panel will, will pop up on the right-hand side. Uh, you, you can name that whatever you want. Um, a lot of the times people keep that as play audio just to, so it's a reminder there. Uh, and then you'll put in the prompt or uh, what you want to play. So you can, either you can either type in the text-to-speech that you want to be said, or you can search for a prompt out of that. Um, there's a button on the right hand side over here that will then you can click that it will pop up another box and you're able to then do a little more in-depth search or add add custom things. Uh, for the call flow outline that essentially is right here. I did not highlight that, but the call flow outline is essentially right here. You're gonna it's gonna outline it as you start adding things. It will auto connect them. You won't have to you know connect them with any kind of arrows or, or lines or anything. They will auto connect. So navigating um, toolbar, we kind of covered some of this, but this let's get into depth a little bit on how this is, because uh, this is going to be really important on the hands-on exercise uh, in this module, as well as all the other modules as we start building our call flow. Um, save, obviously, we know what that is. That is allowing users to save for the current state of the call flow. Uh, you can undo or redo things. That allows you just quick uh, a quick action to, to undo or redo. That way you don't lose anything. Um, you can zoom in and out. Obviously, when you first open up call flows, especially if you've got a pretty uh, a pretty detailed flow out call flow, it's going to do it from a very far perspective. So zooming in, and we'll get into that in the later module as well, zooming in, zooming out, and resetting that view is pretty important. Um, validating, also very important. You will see um, there some of the uh, for your info kind of thing is going to be highlighted in yellow. And there'll be like a little, uh, little, little, yellow, little yellow box with a, a number there of how many are in there. A red is it will not be able to publish without being fixed. Uh, yellow, you can still publish. Um, publish, that's publishing the call flow. You've seen that button in the previous slide. It just makes it live in the contact center. Um, let's say you're coming in to uh, make some adjustments. 
and you're going to be uh, publishing version three. Well, until that's published, version two is still in play. Callers, when they're, when they're calling into experience, uh, the, whatever menu options or whatever you have uh, in that call flow, will not experience the newest version until you publish that flow. So just be wary of that when you go to publish that. And maybe it's best to do it after hours uh, so there's not a, a much load on the system. Uh, search allows you to search specific components. So let's say we have um, some milestones that we want to hit. Uh, we want to search for that particular milestone or we want to search for a particular call log uh, in the flow to kind of do some troubleshooting. You are able to do that. Uh, now, granted, you may need to know the number of that, that call log uh, box or component, um, but it will let you narrow things down based on just uh, searching for uh, words. Uh, version history, that obviously is important as well. Uh, let's say you do publish a version three uh, and for some reason it broke something and you need to quickly get back to version two. You can go and click on the version. You'll click on the, you'll click on the highlighted 2.0 version and be able to save and republish that quickly. So functions and navigation tips for the toolbox. Um, now there's obviously all different kinds of things for the toolbox. This is just some of them. I'm, I'm making this PowerPoint available in a PDF form, so that's why there's a lot of this ex, you know, ex, explained in these, uh, in these, uh, these slides. Um, usually I try to cut that down, but let's go ahead and go through this. Call routing, we know what this is. It's components for managing incoming calls, such as queues, menus, routing options. User input, it's for gathering input. So let's say we want to get the last four of a social or we want to get a date of birth. That's the gathering input, um, user input box that we're talking about. Uh, for data, so these could be data actions, these could be data table uh, lookups. It's components for managing and manipulating that data within the call flow. You know, whether we go out to a CRM and grab some user information based off of their telephone number that they called in on, um, or we are using a data table to look up uh, what skills we want to apply, um, that kind of thing. Uh, the controls, this is for controlling that flow, the, the flow execution. So lo uh, loops, logic, um, some error handling, that's what the, the control port, uh, portion component of that is. External services could be such, such as web services and CRM. There is that as well as the data action. Uh, media, so this is for playing audio, for te uh, text-to-speech, any kind of multimedia interactions is going to be under the media. And then finally, analytics. This is like flow outcomes, flow, um, anything to do with the flow and their outcome, um, as well as milestones, capturing and analyzing that data. Uh, call logs are kind of in that, but we have a comma module that we'll create in this uh, in this course to kind of cover that. So workspace functions and navigation tips. This is that main area where you're going to be working um, solely out of. This is where you're going to drag and drop different components in order to make a working call flow that either has self-help or it delivers to an agent to assist your to assist your customer. Uh, one is the canvas. That's that main working area that I showed you that had that one component on it. Really click and drag those items there uh, to the components. They will logically um, attach each other, attach them to each other, depending on where you click and drag them. So the connections, that's those lines that we're talking about. That's just a visual representation of the flow. Uh, you will not have to do anything with those. It's really going to, those, those lines will just represent themselves. And as you drag those components in and place them in different areas, those lines are auto-populated. Uh, so selected component properties, if you remember right, when you highlight a component on the right hand side of the screen will be the properties panel. That's where you're able to, you know, add text to speech, um, add, search for a prompt and add it. Other things are uh, different if you're, if you're going to do a loop, the, you know, the number of loops that you want to, to do and what you want to call that variable, that kind of thing. We'll get into that as, as we flow through this course as well. Uh, finally, flow variables. This is kind of Based off of the, the previous one of the property panels, you might be able to, or you should be able to um, insert flow variables uh, into certain certain portions of the components, and that will also get to. So property panels, functions, and navigation tips. So this is a good one. This is some good notes that you'll be able to have uh, down the road. Uh, these properties panels, obviously, this is that panel again that pops up on the right-hand side when a component is displayed or when you have it highlighted. Uh, so when it's selected on the canvas, the property panels display, whether it's settings and options, there's a whole, a whole different kind of variety of things that happens depending on what the component is. We'll cover those in the hands-on exercises as we go forward so you get a good understanding of that. Uh, Input-output variables. So if you're doing, let's say, a data action or a data table, there's going to be an input that you're going to have to put in there uh, in order to retrieve information. I usually liken that to a data table, which we'll cover in this, in this uh, series. 
uh, but input of could be, you know, uh, whatever number they called. So the DNS that's going in and you're going to pull back set information because maybe you have several offices using this work, this call flow, uh, and you need to separate them by uh, a certain thing with skills in, in whatever whisper tones. Uh, default paths, this is an automatic, obviously we'll go through, you're going to have um, a default path and it's kind of like a, a fail safe. It's a, it's a happy fail safe path and essentially. Um, so if it does go down a default path, you can use that to set different properties um, as well as, as set different paths for that. A language setting. So this is another good thing. Uh, it does do multiple languages. Um, typically, you'll only, you'll only see two or three languages in a call flow, but there can be as many as you want there to be. It says four components that involve text or speech. The properties panel provides language settings that allow users to configure the component for different languages and dialects. Now, however, prior to doing that, there is on the left-hand side of the workbench uh, a place where it says languages. You will have to apply that given language. So let's say, obviously, English is default um, if you're doing uh, if you're in the English-speaking world. Uh, if you need to add Spanish um, or Russian or anything like that, you would need to go to that languages first, add that additional language, and then you'd be able to have that option within those components. That is something that we do cover in this uh, in this training. So that will be one on one of the hands-on exercises. Finally, component validation. So that properties panel, may, properties panel may highlight any errors or missing configurations. It's going to highlight that in red. Also in that validate button um, on the panel up top, uh, or on the ribbon up top, that will also be highlighted in red because that will be associated to this to the errors. Um, that'll help you identify and resolve issues before deploy, deploying the call flow. It will also prevent you from deploying the call flow, so keep that in mind. Those have to be um, those have to be taken care of, fixed prior to that flow being deployed. So, call flow outline functions and tips. Um, designing call flows. So, users can create call flows by dragging components from the toolbox onto the canvas and connecting them in the desired order to define the routing logic. Managing call flows is just uh, architect allows users to manage multiple call flows, including creating new call flows, copying uh, existing or deleting call flows as needed. One thing to note for deleting call flows, you do need to make sure that there is no dependencies. And you remember that that dependency tab um, that we showed in a few slides earlier. That's a good thing to do. You can actually go and put in a call flow that you want to delete. It will then show you all the dependencies that you have to correct or fix prior to deleting that call flow. Version control. The great thing that about version control is it gives you every single version. Uh, it doesn't obviously, it doesn't auto deploy to the same call flow. If you click that version, it opens up a new tab for you, displays that version of where you can download that and then import if needed. Uh, publishing call flows, like you see in the publish publish button, it does it allows you to deploy call flows to the contact center environment by publishing them, making them live and operational. It is very seamless, very quick. It takes in a matter of minutes of uh, pressing that uh, publish button, it's ready to be, it's ready to go live. Finally, monitoring optimization. So that's architect enables users to monitor call flow performance, make adjustments to optimize efficiency and caller experience. So one thing we are going to do in this uh, in this training is show you how to build a comma module which has call logs and apply those call logs to the flows in order to get good data uh, within the within the interaction itself. So as we walk through that, you'll understand a little bit more. So very common practices, good practices, best practices, save your work frequently. It is not, it's okay if you save it, you can dis disregard that. You can, you can revert that back without publishing and having to revert it back. Make sure you save. Use meaningful names and descriptions for call flows and components. That's very important. Uh, oftentimes I will change the default names to it to match what it means to us. That way I don't necessarily have to click on the component to see what it is or understand what it is. Uh, it allows you to kind of see it holistically without having to drill down each time. Finally, organize, organize your workspace for easy navigation and updates. So that is in the call flow. You have that workspace. Uh, you can make that very detailed. It will allow you to, to make that very robust and very long. Break it up. Break it up either into menus, break it up into reusable tasks. That way, each thing is kind of segmented from itself. Uh, it helps, especially for one reason. Uh, if you go to make a change and they're separated into multiple reusable tasks, you're able to make that change in that reusable task only 
if something breaks, you know exactly where to go and you can fix it. Uh, if you have it all in one, you're taking a bigger chance of, of something going wrong down the line uh, without being able to quickly fix. So in conclusion, so as we keep embarking on this journey with Genesis Cloud Architect, one thing it's important to remember uh, that the exploration hands-on experiences that we're going to be showing you are essential to mastering this powerful tool. So we encourage you to dive in, familiar, familiarize yourself with the interface and its features. It will become more comfortable. You will get used to it. Uh, and after all of this said, is, is said and done, uh, it'll be like the back of your hand. Uh, don't be afraid to experiment, especially in this exploring time now um, without how, you know, any pressure being on you to build call flows. Ex explore, click and drag, pull things over, see what it can do, um, see how far you can push it. Um, we have a lot of hands-on exercises in this training series, but feel free to go further than that. Take that to another level. Um, that will just make you that much more ready um, to either, um, one, take the, the certifications, or two, use this in real world, ex world experience. Make sure you go through the toolbox, the properties panel, workspace, everything. Get comfortable with it, press buttons, um, you're going to do this on a test call flow. Uh, create your own test call flow if there's not one. Uh, play with it there. That way you have an understanding. If it breaks, it's not a big deal. You can wipe it out and start over. Uh, practice makes perfect. Another good thing. Uh, keep going on what you're doing. Uh, if you can, get a test number and tie it to the uh, tie it to your call flow. We do go through that and how to do that uh, in later training episodes. Um, but try to do that. Uh, that way you're able to call in uh, as you're making these, you know, making these adjustments to see how it sounds, what it, what it does. Um, see if you can get it to disconnect because maybe you've done, you put something in the wrong spot. But always, there's a ton of Genesis Cloud documentation. There's forums, there's support resources. I do have those linked in quite a few of these different, uh, these different episodes or different modules. Uh, so feel free to, to get through all of that. Can, happy exploring and uh, we'll we'll continue this with module three obviously next up for you guys is the hands-on exercise and the uh the question q a so thanks see you guys next time